With the Clash of Champions coming up this weekend, just what would happen on the Go Home Show? Not much from what I saw. It's time for WGST Review Smackdown Live for the week of December 12th, 2017. Hey YouTube, are you ready for your hot tag? Because if you are, it's definitely time to work. <laughs> Hey guys, it's the Insane Machine Cody Hawkins, and you're watching WGS-TV. <laughs> What's up guys, I'm the Russell Gamer, welcome back to another episode of WGS-TV right here on YouTube.com slash Russell Gamer. I want to start off by saying this. Usually SmackDown Live, in my personal opinion, puts on semi-decent to decent shows, especially when Raw wasn't delivering like they should. But this go-home show last night just felt rushed, put together at the last minute. There were a few good spots about the show, but they were few and far between. I just kind of felt disappointed, but anyway, let's talk about SmackDown Live. <laughs> AJ Styles would open up SmackDown Live talking about his upcoming championship match with Jinder Mahal this Sunday at Clash of Champions, and I do promise to have a preview video about the Clash coming out later this week when the Singh brothers would come out in a lame attempt to convince Styles that they were done, and I honestly don't know what was more obvious. Samoa Joe in the bar in the opening segment of Raw Monday Night or the Singh brothers, because honestly, they weren't selling it at all. The former WWE Champion would make his appearance just to see Styles beat down both Sings and throw them out of the ring. I'm glad that this was the opening segment because if this was the main event segment, it would have been a lame ending to SmackDown Live this week, but instead it was an okay opening for what it was, but I did expect more since this was all about building up the WWE Championship match at the Clash. I'm going to give this a 2.5 out of 5. Opening match this week was Charlotte taking on Ruby Wright with Natalya on commentary. With this being the go-home show for the Clash of Champions, I was wondering just what would they do to help push the angle with Charlotte and Natalya for the SmackDown Women's Championship and the Lumberjack match. I didn't think that they would have Charlotte lose and look bad going into the pay-per-view, so they would have Natalya attack Charlotte to end the match and a disqualification. However, the Riot Squad would attempt the same thing uh, to that they did to Charlotte that they did to Naomi a couple of weeks ago which screamed return and save which is what Naomi did uh, and as the Riot Squad was on stage in retreat the rest of the Smackdown women's locker room i.e. Tamina Lana who looked really hot in her ring gear and Carmella would get a measure of revenge on the squad to end the segment an okay match for what it was three out of five up next it was Dolph Ziggler taking on Baron Corbin First thing to mention is, it appeared that WWE is dropping the entrance angle with Dolph because he came out to his full theme. Second thing to mention is that they had Bobby Roode out there on commentary to what I initially believed put over the United States Championship Triple Threat match for the Clash this Sunday, but instead they had him go in there after a very short match to attack both Dolph and Corbin to end the match in a no contest. Now, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, when one of the challengers goes over in the go-home show, then they wouldn't be going over on the pay-per-view, but the geniuses at WWE Creative had to find that logic before, so I wouldn't be surprised to see them do it again. But I'll talk more about that on the preview video I promised to have coming out later this week. My only gripe about this is how short the match was, because I know Rude is a great talker, and they could have had him put over the match just a bit longer on commentary, during the match before doing the run-in. That's my only gripe. I'm giving this a 2.5 out of 5. Up next, they had the Bludgeon Brothers destroy a couple of jobbers as they would announce that at the Clash, it will be the Bludgeon Brothers taking on Brizongo. Talent enhancement matches are usually piss breaks in my opinion, 2 out of 5. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn would attempt to occupy SmackDown Live just like Daniel Bryan did with Raw several years ago and would attempt to start their own version of the Yes Movement, calling it the Yep Movement, which would bring up the SmackDown general manager who questioned their version of the Yep Movement by saying the Yes Movement was never about him, but the fans. Brian would end the segment by announcing that he would be the second special guest referee in the tag match this Sunday. I would assume WWE made this move to make it look like the deck wasn't so stacked against Owens and Zayn coming up this Sunday. 
I did think the yip movement was a bit of a joke in my opinion, but it's still overall good segment. Three out of five. Up next, it was Aiden English and Rusev taking on the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the Usos. First thing I want to say is that Gable and Benj Benjamin's promo was kind of weak and weird. Really didn't have anything believable behind it. Second, can someone please explain, explain to me why the hell have the New Day been coming out with pancakes ever since the SmackDown after Survivor Series? What's the connection? Thirdly, and this proves the geniuses of WWE Creative, you put a thrown together tag team like Rusev and English over on your tag team champions? Way to go, smart people. The finish of the match was English hitting a modified DDT on Uso to pick up the win. I think I might need some pancakes myself after watching that one. Two out of five. Main event this week was Kevin Owens taking on Shinsuke Nakamura with Daniel Bryan on commentary. The majority of the match was spent uh, by Byron Saxton trying to play up Daniel Bryan as a heel who's planning to turn on Shane McMahon at the Clash with Corey Graves defending him. I think if Saxton was attempting to plant the seeds of a turn by Bryan, he honestly did an okay job, but it could have been better. As far as the match goes, it did what it needed to do, and that was build up the tag match for the Clash. One thing to note is that Daniel Bryan put on the referee shirt when the, ref the assigned official went down, and when he counted the pin for Owens, Saxton went conspiracy theory nuts with his promo, which kind of shows he was trying just a bit too hard. The finish of the match was Owens hitting the pop-up powerbomb on Nakamura to pick up the win. For a dismal show, this was the most interesting match. 3.5 out of 5. Overall score of SmackDown Live this week gets a 2.5 out of 5, with best match of the night going to the main event, with worst match of the night going to English and Rusev versus the Usos. I totally disagree with the outcome of it. Why put together a why put a thrown together tag team over on your tag team champions? You just make your tag team champions look weak and make them look bad. Again, that's a move that I 100% disagree with. But anyway, guys and gals, that's been my thoughts on SmackDown Live this week. What I want to know from you guys out there, the viewers and subscribers, your thoughts on SmackDown Live. What are your overall scores? What are your picks for best and worst match or segment of SmackDown Live this week? I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say. Be sure to put your comments in the comment section below. If you guys like this video, be sure you slam that like button like a champ. If you guys want to see more wrestling reviews right here on the channel, you know the two ways you got to do it. You got to leg up the subscribe button and hit that bell icon to turn on notifications. So that way you guys will never miss out on another video right here on my channel. So with that being said, I'm your friendly neighborhood Russell Gamer reminding all of you guys out there to stay awesome. Bye guys.